Hi everybody, I'm Chi. I'm so glad you're here as we kick off a new series today. We're gonna to spend the next three weeks talking about something that I think has the potential to change the way we see ourselves and others. But before we get there, let me ask you a quick question. What's the last thing you got overly involved in? The show you couldn't stop binge watching? The video game you couldn't stop playing? The trend you couldn't help but participate in? The artist or song you couldn't stop listening to? The word or phrase you couldn't stop saying, even if it annoyed everyone else? A person you were dating? Too soon? I know for me, it's been moving into a new house. I have a small family and a two-year-old. We've previously lived in a one-bedroom apartment, so we had quickly outgrown it. And now I have all of this space to fill. Four whole bedrooms, three bathrooms, a garage. I don't know what to do with myself. So I'm looking at all these DIY projects. I'm going on YouTube and I'm looking at how to make this $2,000 coffee table that I cannot afford. But if I look at all the supplies, I might have some of the things sitting right there, right? So I'm watching tutorials and figuring out how to make it. And then I go down a rabbit hole. I start looking at all the power tools I don't have. I start looking at all these moms and dads and kids that have all of these things to make these projects real and I don't. So then it just, it just goes into this wild, wild place that is not safe for me. We all get it, right? There are times when we simply get overly involved in something. In this series, we're talking about another thing that we can get overly involved in. It's called comparison. We all have times when we get wrapped up in comparing ourselves with others. You thought you were strong until they outlifted you by 100 pounds. You thought your fit looked great until you saw theirs. You thought your crush was awesome until you saw theirs. You were excited about your car until they pulled up. You thought you were brilliant until you had class with that one person. You thought your house was nice until you went to your friend's house. This list can go on for days. It's comparison. We all do it. It's natural and normal. But as we discover in this series, it's not just something we do. It's something that actually steals from us. Here's the tricky thing about comparison. It has a way of taking over every part of our lives. Our thoughts, our words, our actions, our relationships, they're all impacted. This usually happens in a slow, subtle way, and we almost never recognize it. When we compare ourselves to others, we have a tendency to believe that what they have is better than what we have. After all, we seem to be drawn to comparing ourselves to people who have something we want. He has the musical ability you wish you had. She has the family you wish you had. He has the abs you wish you had. She has the social following you wish you had. When we get caught up in comparing ourselves with someone else who has something that we feel like we don't, it's an automatic loss for us. It's like playing a game that we can't win. And even though we theoretically know that nobody has a perfect life, we start to feel like they do. Wait, it gets worse. Then comparison starts stealing our peace, and our joy. We look at what they have and we start feeling disappointed in what we have or don't have. Maybe we get angry. We think that they're getting what we actually deserve. Maybe we feel hopeless. No matter what we do or how hard we try, we'll never get where they are or have what they have without us even realizing it. Our peace and joy have been taken by comparison. The thief of everything. Let me illustrate this in a simple way. Let's say that there was a day when you felt lonely and wished that you were dating someone. You may think, I, I would never feel that way. It's okay, people. This is just an illustration. Relax, okay? On that day, I can promise you that every couple you pass would seem perfect. It would be like magic is around you. You'd feel like you were surrounded by the happiest couples in human history. You start to see the thing you want almost everywhere. That's one of the many subtle ways that comparison messes with our minds. One more thing. Even when we compare ourselves to someone who doesn't have what we have, it steals from us. If we're better at that sport, we worry, what happens if they pass me? If we have that boyfriend, we wonder, well, does she hate me because I'm dating the guy who she wants to date? If we always look good, we start stressing as we get ready for that day because we think that people are expecting perfection from us. Our gratitude for what we have is replaced by fear. The thing that should give us confidence actually makes us feel insecure. It's a losing game, friends. That's the bad news. But here's the good news. We're not the first people to deal with this. And what we talk about today can be a game changer as we learn to recognize and deal with this subtle, sneaky thief. Like we said, comparison is natural and normal. It's part of being human. Thankfully, the humans who lived thousands of years ago, just after the time Jesus was alive on earth, wrote down a thing or two about their struggles with comparison. The passage we're going to look at today was written by a guy named Paul, who was the greatest missionary in the history of Christianity. He helped spread the Christian faith, and he often wrote letters to encourage people and help them learn more about God. 
In the letter we're looking at today, Paul addresses what it looks like to get involved in comparison. Here's what he said. Oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. Paul was talking specifically about some false teachers who were bragging about their spirituality to others. However, I think the truths he shared here can still help us with what we're talking about today. Paul is basically saying, we're all just creating our own standard of comparison. We're looking at each other and deciding what we think our lives need to look like. At the root of comparison are things like emotion, perception, and what other people say. That's foolish. It's not wise and it's not helpful. A few verses later, Paul tells us to turn our attention elsewhere. Check it out. When people commend, or compliment and praise themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. Paul is saying that we spend our time focusing on other people and how we measure up to them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't count for much. In fact, it steals from us. It's the thief of everything. Instead, God's encouraging us to turn our focus toward God. God sees us, loves us, and cares about every area of our lives. God's not basing our worth and value on how we look that day, what type of car we drive, or how much we can bench press. God sees us as beloved children, no matter what. It has nothing to do with the people around us. Think of it this way. God doesn't compare you to others. God's not looking to see how we line up to the people around us. God's not taking away points when we don't maintain the image we want to project. God's designed us to be just the way we are because of that. God doesn't need to compare us to anyone else. God sees everything about us through the lens of His love for us. That's the way God wants us to see ourselves too. Instead of getting caught up in comparison, we can choose to remember that in God's eyes, we're always enough. Focusing on God's love will shrink the power of comparison in our lives. The book of Proverbs gives us a good starting point for how to protect ourselves from this thief. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Comparison starts in our hearts. So if we want to avoid letting ourselves get caught up in the negative parts of comparison, then we have to stop it in the same place. So here are some ways you can guard your heart. Pay attention to your feelings. Notice the way your mood or outlook changes when you start to compare yourself to someone else. Do you feel disappointed, frustrated, angry, anxious? Those feelings may be clues that you're caught up in comparison. Find out what's fueling it. What are you looking at, thinking about, or doing when you start to feel those things? What's fueling your negative feelings of comparison? If it's something in your control, take a step away from it. Close the app, turn off the TV, take a break from that friend group for a day or so. If it's something you can't control, talk to someone who can help. Your small group leader is a great person to start with. They can help you identify steps you can take to guard your heart and break free from what's fueling comparison in your life. Think about your phone. Even though we pay attention to it all day, we hardly ever think about it, do we? It's just a natural, normal extension of our lives. The only time we do is when the battery is low. That's our cue to do something different. We have to find a cord and recharge it. Comparing ourselves to others is like having a low battery. It's the sign that we're not guarding our hearts. It's the sign that we need to do something different. We need to turn our attention elsewhere, change what we're exposing ourselves to, or put some things on do not disturb. In the same way that a low battery is a sign to charge it, what if comparing became your signal to focus on the God who loves you so much? Let's recap. First, pay attention to your feelings. Then, find out what's fueling it. Lastly, you can celebrate what you do have. Instead of filling your heart with comparison, fill it with the celebration for all the things you do have, the things that you're thankful for, the things you like about yourself, the good in your life. In fact, focusing every day on the way God sees you is a great place to start. A great way to do that is to read scripture focused on what God says about you. When you're tempted to compare, Fill that space in your heart with something better. Fill it with things that remind you of the truth that God doesn't compare you to others. Every single one of us struggles with comparison in different areas of our lives. The good thing is that we don't have to struggle alone. One of the reasons we have small groups is to give you a place to talk about these things and become more aware of them. So I hope you'll open up about how you may be struggling to break free from comparison with your group today. I hope that you don't compare the way you answer the questions to the way that someone else does. Let's be safe people to be honest with each other in group. As you do, I want you to think about this question. What's one area of my life where I tend to compare myself to others?